Hello, I'm Christopher, a research software engineer from Research Software Workshops, and it's a very warm welcome to part 8, the final part of this beginning our course. Now this final part is really just a conclusion summary of what we've been learning so far, so this is chriswoods.com slash beginning R, and here we are on this summary page. Once again, well done for getting this far. If you've been through this entire workshop, particularly if this was the first time you've ever programmed, you have covered so much in this course and you should feel very proud of yourself. So just as a reminder of what we've covered, well, we've, we've done RStudio and we've played a little bit with RStudio. We've looked at the print function for how you get things printed to the screen. You learned about basic data types, so strings and your floats and integers, which are the numerics. We played with lists and how you can index them and slice them and append to them. We played around with branching logic, such as if statements. So if something is true, do this, else if something else, do that. We also looked at looping, so how you do for sound in sounds or for animal in animals. And you looked at how you can loop over data structures such as lists, sequences, dictionaries and files. We then played with creating and modifying and accessing dictionaries and then reading files and beginning to build some simple statistics from them. Now, don't worry if you don't remember all of this. It's pretty much impossible to memorise all of these things, particularly if this is the first time you've seen it. And learning any programming language will take much more than three hours. So it's only by playing with R, continuing to use it and practice it, that you'll grow in confidence and you'll be able to do it. Now, of course, this video and these notes will always remain online, so please feel free to refer back to them at any time. Equally, as we have a list down here, and I'll just show you at this point, we have lots of extra material you can look at. There's some excellent books which are online, particularly those by Hadley Wickham. So please do feel to read, read more and come back, and hopefully this hasn't scared you off R. Now, just to try and bring everything together, we have one final exercise. This is a little bit more difficult and a bit more challenging, but if you are able to do it, and you know, you will be, you will have sort of reinforced everything that you've done in this workshop. Equally, watch me have a go at it after you've paused, and sort of hopefully things will make a lot of sense. So press pause now if you want to have a go yourself. Otherwise, when you come back, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, we've unpaused now. So this exercise is a much more difficult challenge. The aim is you're going to be writing a calculator which can read numeric operations from a file and then print the answers to the screen. The first thing we need to do is create a file called calc.txt. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. So let me close data.txt and file.r. I'm first going to create a new file, a new text file, and I'm going to call this text file calc.txt. And now into that file, I'm going to put these expressions. So these are the things we want the calculator to be able to calculate. Make sure there's no spaces in between, just so it's all together. So we want to write an R program that will read each of these lines in turn, and will then perform the calculation that's specified. So when it reads 4 times 6, it should calculate 24. Now how are we going to do this? So first thing we're going to have to do and we want it to write 4 times 6 is 24, 5 plus 6 is 11, etc. Is we're going to have to read these files. So whenever you have a problem like this, it's worth building it up step by step. It's very rare that you can write an entire program all in one go from the beginning. So let's create a new R script that we're going to call calc.r. And we'll start off by just reading the lines from the file. So here's calc.r. And how do we read the lines? We say lines is read lines file calc.txt. Now we know we're going to have to read these lines one by one, so let's loop over every single line, so for line in lines. And to start off with, all I'm going to do is just print the line, just to be happy with myself that, yes, I can actually read this file. So there we are, we have read the file. Okay, now what we need to do is we now need to somehow break this file up. So if we take a look at it, here we are. Now we can see that we're using spaces to separate out all of the different elements in this line. So we want to now get these elements, so 4 times 6, well there are 3 elements here, the number 4, multiply sign and 6. We can split it out using the string split function. So let's now use the string split function, so words comes from string split. Now you pass in the string you want to split, in this case the line, and then what you want to split by which in this case will be a space. Now, because of the way the string split works, we need to put this double square bracket one afterwards. 
Now if I just print words, let's see what this has given us. There we are, we can now see we have lists. So string split has turned this into a list, so the words now contained each of the three elements for each line, one after another. Now this means that the left-hand side of the expression, which we're going to assign to the variable LHS, is equal to words1. But remember, these are strings, so this means we must convert this into a numeric. So this is going to be as numeric words1. Now the right-hand side is the third element, which is also a number, so let's do as numeric words3. What about the operator in the middle? Well, that's just a string, so we can say operator is his words2. Okay, let's now print these to the screen just to be very happy that we've got exactly what we want. So let's do print, paste, um, actually use cat because we showed you cat last time. It looks a little bit prettier. So cat, da, 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 da. let's say LHS is, uh, let's do LHS operator. RHS, and let's just leave it at that, and then with a new line on the end. And let's see what this prints. Okay. So there we can see 4 times 6 new line. Now we want to calculate the result of performing the calculation. Now the operator is a string, so we can see what type of operator it is by using an if block, because we want to do different things if it's a different operator. So let's say if the operator is a plus, then we want to say result is the left hand side plus the right hand side. And now if we put in this case here the result in, let's see what this prints now. Ah, oh, that's not worked because we haven't defined the result actually outside of this loop, so we must make sure the result is here. So let's put the result is zero to begin with. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so we have 4 times 6, 0, but here, look, the 5 plus 6, 11 has actually worked. That's really good, and that's because we only have the plus sign in. Let's now put in else if operator equals minus. Result is going to be the left-hand side minus the right-hand side. We can do the same thing for times. Result is now left-hand side times right-hand side. And then finally, let's now do division. Then we can say finally, result is left-hand side divided by right-hand side. Let's now see what this looks like. Okay, that's now looking better. It's now doing what we want it to do, but the output isn't completely what we wish. So what we can do is we can say, let's now take these parts and we need to just add in just an is to make this a bit cleaner. So that was a mistake. There we are. Let's go back here. Let's run this now. There we are. 4 times 6 is 24. 5 plus 6 is 11. 457 minus 75 is 382, etc. And we've actually completed this. And so that has given you the answer. Now you might notice if we go and look at the actual course material that you have a slightly different answer here for the actual answer to the exercise. So in that case here we've put the result and we've performed the results and then done the print at the end. In this case we've actually run perform the calculation and printed directly within each block of the if statement. I'm highlighting this because there is no one right answer when you're programming. Effectively any script which gives you the answer that is requested based on the input that is there, is a correct and working script. I also hope that you've seen that I built this up bit by bit. I didn't know how to write it when I started. I kind of solved it part by part as I'm working through. And that's how you do, that's how you program. We tend never to know exactly what we're doing when we get started. So that's the, the more challenging exercise. So I really do hope that this workshop has given you kind of like an introduction to R as a programming language. And if this is the first time you've ever programmed, you're now feeling a little bit more confident that programming is not this horrible, scary thing. It is actually a very doable thing. Now, this workshop is before and a prerequisite for intermediate R. 
Intermediate Hire will sort of build on this and will basically give you the firm foundation that you'll need to continue to learn R and really begin to apply it for statistical programming and data science applications. Now this workshop is very, very small. There are some fantastic books that are available, particularly by Hadley Wickham and co. So for example, Aunt Advanced Star and R for Data Science. Very much encourage you to read these as these will give you a lot of detail and a lot of background on the, on the subjects you've been covering in this workshop. As we've said, once you've completed this workshop and Intermediate R, you will be ready to move on to the Introduction to Data Analysis in R and Applied Data Analysis in R workshops, which will be following this course. Just to give some credits, this beginning R workshop closely mirrors, closely mirrors our beginning Python workshop, which was developed by Matt Williams and based on an earlier beginning Python workshop developed by myself. The text of this workshop is all under Creative Commons, although the video is under the YouTube license. And the source material for this workshop can be found at the GitHub link below, where any fixes or any changes are very welcome. Equally, if you wish to add any comments in the, for this video, please do so. And we very much welcome sort of any feedback that you'd like to give and how we can improve these workshops. Other than that, thank you very much for taking this workshop. You've now completed part eight. I hope to see you in the second workshop, sort of in intermediate R, but otherwise, thank you very much and goodbye.